We're going to learn how to make a basic row of chains. So the chain stitch is like the flattest, simplest crochet stitch there is, and it's often the foundation row for a lot of crochet projects. So if you haven't figured out how to do a slip knot yet, go check out the slip knot mini tutorial that we've also got posted. I've got a link in the comment box down below. This particular tutorial is all about chaining. It's also a mini tutorial, and it's going to be really, really small and to the point, all we're going to cover is chains. So you ready? Let's get started. Okay, chaining. Chaining is usually done with a, a slip knot to start. So if you don't understand slip knots, then you want to go to that link down below in the comic box that'll take you to the slip knot because I'm just going to quickly create the slip knot this time because the focus is going to be on chaining. So you're going to take your string, you're going to make a loop so that the long end passes over the short end. You're going to grab that string so that you've got a loop on your hook and then take both ends and there's your cinch, or I should say your, <laughs> your slip knot, also a cinch. One slip knot made. Now, to chain. Chaining is the most basic foundation um, stitch known to crochet and it typically starts most um, most crochet patterns if you're not working in the round off a cinch circle. So when it tells you to chain 15 or chain 25, you always want to start with a slip knot and it should be able to move pretty freely across your hook. And remember, you're always going to work using your long string. So try not to, if you've made it with a really long sort of end, you might want to snip it or just try to tuck it up against the, um, the crochet hook you're using just so you don't confuse the two. So, to chain, you take the string in your non-crochet hook hand, you wrap it around your hook. So remember, if you're holding your hook here, it's easiest to have your hook facing you and to wrap around from the back. Now, once you get comfortable, you will discover your own style and you can wrap that string around your hook any way you like. But for demonstrative purposes, we're going to hold our hooks with the hook facing us. We're going to wrap that string around our hook. And you want to try and hold the work that's already attached to your hook. It's a little difficult um, when you first start. Um, so don't worry, because the first few stitches are always a bit tricky. But what you want to do is wrap that string and use your hook to just pull it through the loop that's on your hook. Okay, so now we have a new loop on our hook. That's what it looks like. We're going to do that again. So you take your working string, you wrap it around your hook, and try to hold on to the work that's on your hook, and you use your hook to pull that yarn through the loop. All right. That's two chains. We're going to chain again. Take your long string, wrap it around your hook, and you're going to use your hook to pull that string through the loop. There you go. That's three. And chains look exactly like the top of most um, crochet stitches. So for example, when you're working into a stitch down the road, the stitch you're actually working into looks like this. That's what the top of your work is usually going to look like. So we wrap and pull through the loop. Wrap, pull through the loop. Wrap and pull through the loop. And pretty soon you've got a whole foundation row of chains going. Now whatever the pattern is, you want to make exactly that number of chains. And that 
is a pretty solid foundation row for just about anything you could possibly crochet.